the last ten years. Turns out the skin streaks. So when you're talking to those who who is like part of the clinical base and cardiology voice to the world, that suffers is too much for the medicine because of the multiplicity of involvement and therefore their expectations of this disease. Higher is the expectation of the disease and the impact. And it varies to the diagnosis of the medicine. Excitement of the first borders. At the end of 2010, there were 34 million people living living with HIV worldwide, and this figure was up 17 percent from 2001. The rates of new infections have had a decline, but this is has not been as as large a decline in sub-Saharan Africa, which is the most affected region. And comprises um, 12% of the global population, but where 68% of the people are HIV um, uh, The pandemic is extremely severe for Africa, and this is the heart of darkness for any physician with an overwhelming indication of um, in terms of mortality, morbidity, and its forces required to treat this disease. As more effective that results in not just a viral, but complications of late stages and states, infection have emerged. And this unfortunately has uh, includes HIV related heart disease. This, this will have a tremendous global impact. And although the percentage of developed country apparent disease is relatively small, a burden may be substantial in view of the exceptional high prevalence prevalent rate in South Saharan Africa. And these patients will uh, require chronic diagnostic and uh, therapeutic resources. Um, hopefully, uh, one can screen the patients with the regions early. The heart is now the key for the comparison of AIDS in developed countries with cardiovascular disease, the most common cause of death, type, type, type of even AIDS itself. And the mechanisms of a cardiac disease associated with HIV infection include direct myocardial and chronic HIV infection, autoimmune factors, and different risk factor profiles. The cardiac disease is usually overshadowed by manifestations of other organ systems, and the involvement of um, autopsy significantly exceeds the number um, with, with clinically apparent heart disease. In, the, in, in high income uh, countries, uh, premature cardiovascular disease from HIV has evoked significant concern, particularly in the post HIV era. But the most common manifestations in Africa include dilated cardiomyopathy, pericardial disease, pulmonary hypertension, and endocardiopathy syndrome and abnormalities are most common. The subclinical echocardiographic abnormalities independently predict an adverse outcome. And identify how many patients who can be targeted for early intervention. The common complications occur late in the course of the disease and is clinically only apparent in a small percentage. The very few clinical results have poor information on the impact of the disease patients. Then there are other clinical manifestations. Congestive heart failure is common, and this is often due to ventricular dysfunction. Dyspnea or shortness of breath is often incorrect, incorrectly attributed to lung disease because of the frequency of operative procedures to reverse them. So it is important to consider echocardiography to, to read out um, heart disease in, in these patients. Other um, uh, abnormalities or lesions um, that may result in symptoms include pericardial disease, usually um, without tachycardia but not invariably so. Pulmonary hypertension and heart ventricular dilatation and really arrhythmias and infective echocarditis. This check, Stephen Richards once said that most of the cardiac problems are clinically unrecognized because they can easily be attributed to infectious disease complications or lung disease. All the signs and symptoms that you associate with heart failure can sometimes be attributed to other causes. So if you don't look, you don't have it. Uh, approximately 10 to 15 years ago, um, we did a small study at the Hilda Hospital to assess the incidence of unsuspected cardiac abnormalities 
in our patients, compared to hospitalized patients, um, and, and we, we were infected later, we, we are 65 inpatients, 30 asymptomatic early stage outpatients. Most of the, 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 the hospital patients who have predominantly admitted for respiratory disease and pneumonia, you can see that their CD4 count is significantly lower than our patients. On echocardiogram, there was no, there was no evidence of heart disease in any of the outpatients. And we, 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 we subjected all the patients to echocardiography. And if I can tell you a little bit about it, this is an echocardiogram. It's like a standard description to your heart. This is anterior posterior. This is the left ventricle. This is the atrial valve and aortic root over here. So it says on the function, we take a cut through here and it's on a funnel called the endo. And we do a picture like this. And we can really work out something called a fraction of fraction of shortening or section fraction, which is a very large LV function test. And just to show you a few examples, this is a patient with a normal heart. This view is taken from the apex. This is the left side, right side, the left ventricle is atrial. You can see that this patient has a normal left ventricular systolic function. Now look at this patient. This, this patient has severe elated cardiomyopathy. This is this long axis case from the view that I showed you. Here's the left ventricle. You can see that it's extremely twisted for their function. With regard to the echocardiographic data of the, uh, the inpatient, 27 of the 60 hospitalized patients had unsuspected abnormalities. There were 16 pericardial fusions, 16 patients with pulmonary hypertension and dilated right ventricles, and five unexpected severe ventricular dysfunction. One of the patients was in congestive cardiac failure. The patients with echocardiographic lesions had significantly lower CD4 count compared to those with normal heart. 166 as opposed to 402. We identified, as I said just now, 16 pericardial effusions. The vast majority were small, that is less than 10 millimeters. Two were large. One patient had signs of uh, cardiac tamponade, right? later when pericardial from the T6 and the congestion axis was proven and pulse rate was good. The second large effusion was apparently treated with your uh, FTCD treatment with steroids and this resolved it. And here you see uh, some pictures taken. This is the patient, the patient's echo who was tamponading. Here's the the, 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 the ventricle. You can see that there's odd echo through space up around, around the heart. And there's fluid which is compressing the chamber. You also see attached to the pericardium is fog, which is actually typical of chronicity and pathology occurs in this particular pericarditis. And here's another picture. This is an extra diffusion, probably of a, a leaky and strained artery. This is the, the, the patient who was treated with empirical TB therapy, was prepared for TB therapy and steroids. And you can see, so after seven days, you can see that the echo space and the fluid actually resolved. Now, pericardial effusions um, um, were, were noted to be extremely common in the pre-heart area in those who have advanced HIV disease with prevalence rates reported up to 45%. Most of the patients are asymptomatic and the effusions are small. Here you see another example. You can see a tiny effusion over here. But the importance of this is that the, the presence of a pericardial effusion is an independent predictor of mortality and poor prognosis. A prospective, a prospective evaluation uh, follows 231 patients for five years. The annual rate of pericardial effusion, effusion is 12%. The vast majority, once again, were extremely small. But the presence of the fusion was associated with significantly shortened survival. At six months, 36% of those with pericardial effusion were alive, compared to um, uh, 93% without. The cause of pericardial disease is idiopathic in the majority of HIV infected patients in industrialized countries. In contrast, in Africa, the majority are due to treatable microorganisms, and tuberculosis is the cause of the, the large effusions in over 80% of patients. Other alternative important diagnoses include atypical microbacteria, 
outcome is, in, is independently associated to the outcome of an embryo premature death. And as both have gotten reported that the median survival in these patients was 180 days compared to 472 days. The usual treatment for heart failure is appropriate, and after that reduction, uh, the beta blockade of hospital inhibitors and the cortisone of treatment of the types of deficit and dysfunction. But what remains unknown is the role of inflammation in, in immune response. And in children with HIV and cardiomyopathy, the evidence suggests that cell function improves after treatment of intravenous um, immunoglobulins. And this suggests that the microbial impairment is a bit of a major mediator. Prognosis, as I said, is worse than other advanced methods. And in children with very simple transmission of HIV, even mild left ventricular dysfunction is associated with very high mortality. And the ongoing HIV heart study will um, bring more light on this. I presently uh, uh, follow a huge cohort of heart patients um, uh, with um, left dilatory cardiomyopathy. We identified um, 16 patients with any hypertension or life expectancy limitation. The mean point of preference was 46. And the, 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 the primary hypertension does not occur in the absence of respiratory disease or left ventricular dysfunction. So this suggests that in this little group, the primary hypertension was between pneumonia, hypoxia, or elevated hypoxia, and we wait, we, um, wait pressure. It's possible that successful treatment of these conditions may reduce right ventricular artery load with possible no subsequent normalization of the artery dimensions. And here we have the echocardiogram on the left side, the heart study is remarkably dramatic and identical. We did not identify primary pulmonary hypertension as yet until it's been described. And HIV associated pulmonary hypertension is almost a thousand fold more common than, than uh, the general population. It portends um, poor outcomes that have a high mortality and a progressive course. And the median survival of those with pulmonary hypertension is 1.3 years uh, compared to 2.6 years um, in HIV not controlled. And the association is largely independent of secondary causes. Asymptomatic elevations of pulmonary pressure are more frequent than, than previously reported. In one study, 35% of HIV patients said pulmonary systemic pressures are greater than 30, and 37.7% in non infectious controls. The pathogenesis is not completely defined, but it is highly probable that pulmonary respiratory proliferation, vasoconstriction, constriction, um, triggered by cytokines, released by infected macrophages, are the cause. The treatment of HIV-associated pulmonary hypertension in the part is unclear. The two studies of the role of pulmonary vasodilators, the Swiss Pulse study uh, reported that heart prevalence survival in the reverse of the underlying pathophysiology. They noted a drop in pulmonary pressure in patients following the retroviral therapy compared to a rise in those who were not treated. It seems that specific drugs um, with the use of retroviral based PRs and Abbasura are independ independently associated with pulmonary hypertension. HIV is a not associated with an increased risk of infective endocarditis. In our little study, we did not identify a patient. And in South Africa, one prospective study identified in three out of 92 patients with endocarditis as being HIV positive. The main factors uh, include genetic valve disease in three quarters of the patients, congenital heart disease, prosthetic valves, and a previous history of infective endocarditis. The fact that there is a high prevalence of HIV and genetic valve disease in Africa suggests that there may be more trade cases coincidentally in the country. In those who are IV drug abusers, um, lifestyle and endocarditis does occur as it always is the main organism. We now have an increased incidence of gram negative organisms and fungi, which do portend this poor prognosis. Non bacterial thrombotic endocarditis occurs in 3 to 5 percent of the Western studies pre heart era with a predilection for patients with the wasting syndrome, but this one has not been described in Africa to the best of my knowledge. 